Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a new lesson of grammar. Today, we will talk about fragments, what they are, the different types of fragments, and obviously, how to fix them. Without further ado, let's start. Imagine the following scenario. My mother needs a car. As I cannot afford to purchase a car and give her the surprise, I decided to give her the rear wheels. And I purchased, of course, the most beautiful and luxurious ones I could find. Am I solving my mother's transportation issue? Well, obviously, I'm not. Because just having the rear wheels does not mean that I have a complete machine that performs the complex functions of a vehicle. Thus, although the wheels were extremely beautiful, they served no purpose for my mother's needs because they are just a fragment of what makes a functional vehicle. The same thing happens with fragments in writing. A complete sentence as a subject-verb combination and can stand alone. But a fragment is just part of a sentence that cannot stand on its own, yet it is incorrectly punctuated as if it were a complete sentence. If you read a fragment by itself without the other sentences that support the discourse, you would realize that the fragment does not express a complete thought for which they leave the reader's view. Let's look at the following example. Including woodchucks, ground squirrels, and frogs. Well, if given only this piece of we would not be able to understand the meaning of the text because it does not make sense on its own. Therefore, this example does not represent a complete thought. Hence, it is not a complete sentence, but simply a fragment of a sentence. Consequently, it becomes clear that we need additional information to complete this particular thought. Let's try to fix this example by completing the thought. Many animals hibernate in winter, including woodchucks, ground squirrels, and frogs. Well, now we can clearly see who the subject is, many animals, what the subject does, hibernate, and the different types of animals that are representative of the subject, which are woodchucks, ground squirrels, and frogs. Well, now we have a complete thought. Most fragments fall into the following five categories. Dependent clause fragments, verbal phrase fragments, missing subject fragments, example and exception fragments, and prepositional phrase fragments. Let's start with the first category. A dependent clause fragment always begins with a dependent word, such as if, after, although, since, when, and because. Let us look at the following example. Although Rob doesn't make much money. As you see, on its own, this dependent clause does not express a complete thought. Therefore, it is a fragment. To correct the dependent clause fragment, connect the dependent clause to the sentence that finishes the thought. For example, although Bob doesn't make much money, he saves enough to go to Bulls games. 
Pay attention to punctuation. If the dependent clause fragment appears at the beginning of the sentence, place a comma after the fragment to attach it to the sentence. For example, when Alice arrived at school, the exam had already started. The second category of fragments are the verbal phrase fragments. A verbal phrase fragment begins with a verb form that does not function as the main verb of the sentence. Verbal phrase fragments include to fragments, ing fragments, and ed or en fragments. Let us see an example of a to fragment to develop her creative abilities. Well, on its own, this phrase, this verbal phrase, does not express a complete thought for which it is clearly a fragment. To express a complete thought, this phrase needs to be supported by an independent clause. Consequently, by attaching the verbal phrase to a complete sentence, we can easily fix the mistake. Let's look at this example. To develop her creative activities, Anne decided to take an art class. Again, pay attention at punctuation. When the to fragment is attached to the beginning of a sentence, place a comma after it, after the fragment, because the verbal phrase serves as an introductory phrase. For example, to mark his place in the book, comma, Santiago used a dollar bill. However, if the to fragment is added to the end of the sentence, do not place a comma before it. For example, Santiago used a dollar bill to mark his place in the book. ING fragments. An ING fragment has no subject and starts with a verb in IND. For example, training harder than before. Well, what about that? Obviously, doesn't make sense. To correct an ING phrase fragment, add a comma to the ING phrase and connect it to the sentence. Then the idea is complete. Example, training harder than before, comma, I broke my own record. Or, I broke my own record, comma, training harder than before. You can also correct an ING fragment by adding a subject and a helping verb to that fragment. For example, I was training harder than before. Another kind of verbal phrase fragment starts with an ED or EN verb form or past participle. If we have a regular verb, then the verb form will end in ed, such as walked, studied, played, and so on. If we have an irregular verb, then the verb form will end in en or another irregular ending, such as broken, grown, written, etc. For example, encouraged by her parents. To correct this type of fragment, connect the fragment to a complete sentence. For example, encouraged by her parents, comma, Mary decided to rehearse harder for the coming concert. Now let's look at the third type of um, fragments which are the missing subject fragments. These type of fragments start with a joining word, such as 
and, or, but, then, and are followed by a verb. For example, but refused the bun. Most of the times, the subject of the verb appears in a previous sentence. Therefore, we don't have a subject here and it doesn't make sense. This is why it is a fragment. Let's look at an example. The cat ate the hamburger, but refused bun. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. Fix the mistake. Connect the fragment to the sentence or add a subject to begin a new sentence. For example, the cat ate the hamburger, but refused the bun. Or, the cat ate the hamburger, he refused the bun. A fourth category of fragments are the example and exception fragments. Well, this occurs when a writer wants to provide an example or show an exception. Example fragments are usually introduced by expressions like such as, including, like, for example, or for instance. Exception fragments usually start with words or expressions like not, except, unless, in spite of, or without. For example, Leonor complained that nothing grew in his garden except weeds. Or on New Year's Eve, Paul promised to give up school, especially chocolate. To fix these mistakes, connect the fragment to the sentence to which it logically belongs. For example, Leonard complained that nothing grew in his garden, comma, except weeds. Or, on New Year's Eve, Paul promised to give up sweets, comma, especially chocolate. The fifth category of fragments are the prepositional phrase fragments. These type of fragments, alone or within a series, cannot function as a sentence. For example, on the front porch. Well, what about that? Obviously, it does not make sense. To correct the mistake, connect the prepositional phrase fragment to the sentence to which it logically belongs. For example, on the front porch, comma, the bird had built her nest. Do not forget about punctuation. If the prepositional phrase comes at the beginning, place a comma after the prepositional phrase. For example, on the front porch, Comma, the bird had built her nest. But if the prepositional phrase is added at the end of the sentence, no comma is required. For example, the bird had built her nest on the front porch. Well, while most fragments fall into these categories, others do not. So, always proofread your writing to make sure that each sentence has a subject-verb combination and that it can stand alone. Well, my friends, that is all for today. If you would like to continue polishing your skills, do not forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification button. Thank you very much for today and... See you next time.